Hello and welcome to London Explained. In this episode, we look at Mayfair, London's most affluent and prestigious sector. It's well known for being the most expensive district within London, but not just because of the Monopoly board. It's been this way for hundreds of years. It's located in the west end of central London, bordered within Oxford Street, Regent Street, Piccadilly and Park Lane. Now, Mayfair was originally part of the Manor of Ear, which was largely rural until the 1700s. Its name originates from the annual Mayfair, which was held between 1686 and 1764, which is now known as the Shepherd Market. The ever-famous Grosvenor family acquired the land through marriage, where Sir Thomas Grosvenor married Mary Davis. The Grosvenor family acquired 500 acres of land, with 100 acres being located within Mayfair. The family began to develop the land under the direction of Thomas Barlow, who was the main designer, subsequently designing Grosvenor Square. By the end of the 1700s, most of the land was developed with upper-class housing, and it never lost its status. There was a massive divide between the rich and poor in this part of history, even more than there is today. Much of the land in the district is owned by seven different estates, including Burlington and Barclay. But the Grosvenors were always the most significant within the area, and by the end of the 1800s, they were the richest family in the whole of Europe, getting rents of more than £15 million, adjusted for inflation today within Mayfair. By the 1900s, the upper class was actually in decline, and servants became more expensive, which meant it was a huge cost to maintain a property within the area. As the 20th century went on, many luxury hotels such as the Dorchester and the Grosvenor House were established. But most famous of all is the Ritz, located on Piccadilly, which was built in 1906. These hotels are some of the most prestigious in the world and come with a hefty price tag per night. Mayfair is well known for its high-class shopping district, including Bond Street, where you'll find some of the most expensive designer brands in the world. The first shopping district to open was the Burlington Arcade, opening in 1819, created as a shopping district for the aristocrats of the day. Barclay Square is another large open space within Mayfair, surrounded by luxurious showrooms such as Ferrari and Rolls-Royce. Almost every building in the district is kept in immaculate condition. Just like the Monopoly board, Mayfair has the highest price for rent on average within London. There are plenty of upper-class cafes and boutiques that surround the area. Residents of Mayfair also have two of London's best parks on their doorstep. When crossing Piccadilly, you've got Green Park, which also leads to St James's Park and Buckingham Palace. And across Park Lane, you've got Hyde Park, which is central London's largest, which features Marble Arch, a London landmark and the northwest cornerstone of Mayfair. Due to the upper class demographic of people living within Mayfair, only one bus route runs within the area but there are plenty of routes on the surrounding roads such as Oxford Street. The London Underground have six stations on the bordering roads of the district which are serviced by the Victoria, Bakerloo, Central and Piccadilly lines. Mayfair sits just within the congestion charge zone of Central London which is currently £15 a day. However, Park Lane, just to the west of Mayfair, misses out on the charge and is a vital road artery of Central London. And that concludes this episode on Mayfair. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, share and subscribe, and I'll catch you again in the later video. Take care.